Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me somewhere quite literally in the middle of nowhere beside an interstate in Texas on an absolute mission of a journey in my AMG GT Black Series. In fact, we're heading all the way to visit a certain someone in Utah who has recently completed the build of his dream house. Yes, my friend James the Stradman. I can't wait to get there a little bit later on. But before that, this leg is 1,300 miles, about 22 hours on Google Maps from where we set off in Austin after the track day at Circuit of the Americas to head all the way. And along the way, this car is going to go through 10,000 miles. We started with just over 9,000 miles on the clock. We're now at 9,482. But as we make our way up, we've got a few checkpoints along the way. In fact, the first stop up the road is in Amarillo, where we're going to stop at the Cadillac Ranch. We've then got the Four Corners Monument, where four different states all meet. As we make our way in one of my dream cars on one of my dream road trips. And talking about dreams, you could win your dream car with the sponsor of today's video, BOTB. So let's get this journey continued. We've got a lot along the way before we're going to be arriving with James in Utah. This is where we need to get this started, get the air conditioning running, because it is far hotter here than I anticipated. In fact, one thing that I've mentioned before that you get when you drive the car on a different continent is that message, traffic sign assist inoperative, because of course it does not have a clue where we are. The sat nav does not cover different continents, although interestingly, the dealer network does, and I'll touch on that a little bit more as well, because so many of these miles have been in places far and wide. In fact, this journey started here nearly 4,000 miles ago. We've driven 3,900 miles in here in the United States. It did about 3,000 miles as well over in the Middle East. But let's get driving, let's get cracking on because we have a long, long journey ahead of us. In fact, it is an overnight drive, but we do have these checkpoints along the way. And I'm quite looking forward to seeing the Cadillac Ranch, but also the Four Corners Monument because that's where you have Utah, Colorado, Arizona and New Mexico all meeting in one place. They are a direct crisscross. And of course, seeing James's house. So stay tuned until we get there at the end of this. But I want to touch more on what the car has been like to own and use so much because I wouldn't be surprised if this is effectively the highest mileage AMG GT Black Series in the world. I can't really believe, maybe at a factory test car or something like that, but I can't believe another customer would have done quite so many miles with theirs yet. Even though it spent three months of my ownership having it resprayed into the solar beam, it spent, well, a couple of months in various different stages in the transportation. We flew it to the Middle East, it was shipped back, it was shipped out here to the US, so it spent a lot of time being transported. But even still, the time I have been with it, it's been go, go, go. I've driven this car on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, probably the coolest track in Europe. I've driven this car at Yas Marina, one of the most iconic tracks in the Middle East, in Abu Dhabi, under the floodlights at night. And I've now driven it at the home of the United States GP in Austin at Circuit of the Americas. Of course, you also now have the F1 races in Miami and in Las Vegas, but Austin is the Grand Prix track home, we can say, the home of the United States F1 race. But now we're just on a long slog. And this is what's so fascinating about it. It's a car that for this kind of driving, you can just pop on cruise control and you can just drive it. Even with the upgrades, we could close the exhaust valve, but it's not particularly droney in here at normal road speeds. You just let it do its thing. It's a GT car, quite literally, the clue's in the name, a grand touring car. And I've been so impressed by it because you would think that this would be too super hardcore, too hardcore. In fact, a drive like this up the highways in the predecessor, the GTR Pro, would even have been a bit too much, too rough. The suspension is fixed, but in here, in comfort mode, it just rides, it just does its thing, it just wafts along. And for a drive like this, we've got loads of luggage space behind, even for things like the uh, local hats we might have picked up and other stuff that's just wedged back there behind the roll cage. You can take multiple suitcases for weeks and weeks on the road, but you can still turn up to Kota and put in lap times that are seriously pretty impressive. We are gonna need the tire change. We've got tires waiting for us ahead. Tires are gonna be onto this car and we'll talk more about that actually as we get further through the journey because I'm not putting another set of Cup 2Rs on it. I am gonna be changing them. But that's a cost I factored in. When we set off from New Jersey, drove across New York, out towards Long Island, up towards Connecticut and Rhode Island, I touched on some of the costs of the trip. We're running very much 
on what I expected back then. It's all pretty much spot on with where I thought it would go. We've probably managed to eke out a bit more tyre tread than I thought, so maybe it's only going to be one set of tyres, not two, that we'll need throughout the journey. It depends what happens on the second part of all of this. But as I said, we do have another 45 minutes or so to get towards Amarillo, towards our first checkpoint at the Cadillac Ranch to see exactly what that looks like right now. So we're on the road to Amarillo, quite literally. Let's go, let's see what this place is like. Where we're headed is just around the corner, but they actually have the Cadillac Ranch gift shop here. That's kind of funny with some examples, but we're going over that away where I believe the main affair is to go and take a look at. And another thing about this, this is actually Route 66. So I've been to the start of Route 66 in Chicago and to the end of Route 66 at the Santa Monica Pier in California. And now we're gonna be somewhere on the middle. I just gotta work out exactly how this works to get to it. I can't even see it, it must be here somewhere. I can see the Cadillac Ranch over there. The car's pointed up. So we will park up here somewhere and go and take a little look at that very briefly. The Cadillac Ranch was first set up back in 1974, but it moved to this location in the late 90s, which is a lovely segue because since 1999, the OTB have been surprising the winners of the Dream Car competition. There are two fantastic competitions each week where you could win a supercar like a Lamborghini, an Aston Martin, or plenty of others to choose from from the lineup. You could also top that up with 50,000 pounds worth of cash to be found in the boot, a life-changing amount of money. They also have the new midweek lifestyle competition where you could win a daily car, for example, the likes of the Volkswagen Up GTI or a Hyundai i30 N. Tickets for that competition start from just 60 pence. You need to be over 18, but it's open globally. Tickets are available worldwide. So what are you waiting for? Check out BOTB and do let me know if you're the next winner. For now, let's head on in and go and take a look at the Cadillac Ranch. Well, check this out then. The 10 Cadillacs from 1949 until the 1960s, angled at the same angle as the Pyramids of Giza as it happens, but they actively encourage you to come and graffiti on them. So presumably there are layers upon layers upon layers of paint, just watching people paint away on different Cadillacs. It was actually about the different tail fins that they changed over the time. And that was the idea behind this, putting together a mixture of cars, some of which were junk, some of which were actually running before they started. Not so the case anymore. Even the gate posts are painted. And if this wasn't locked, I would definitely be driving through because it would be awesome for a photo. Alas, not this time. On we go again, nine and a half thousand, many more to come. We have found our first nice car on the road in quite a while, to be honest, Corvette C8. They do look good. We're catching up on it from behind. And for a second, I thought it was a Ferrari, to be completely honest. It gets that kind of shape, that kind of look. I wonder where they're headed. Not too far from here to New Mexico. <laughs> Onwards. We are now arriving at the state border here for New Mexico. I haven't been here for over a decade. New Mexico Information Center. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. There's a big bridge across the road or something. That's kind of cool up ahead of us. Now, one thing that happens here is the clock goes back an hour. We've changed a few time zones as we drive across the US and it's really confusing trying to just remember where you are and exactly what the time is. Yeah, this is actually the gantry that says New Mexico up above. The previous time I came here was on Gumball back in 2012. My first call, Gumball 3000. Yeah, entering mountain time zone. Welcome to New Mexico, land of enchantment. And the tarmac just got a whole lot worse, which makes my drink rattle around with the ice cubes. And talking about rattles, actually, 10,000 miles, basically. This car's not doing badly. There's one little rattle it's picked up, which is to do with this whole unit up here, the roof control panel. Um, we have a few buttons and things, but the fix has been to wedge in a business card just in there and it stopped it. Not a technical solution, um, but if I take that out, this kind of rattles, you just hold it, it, it stops, so it should be something quite easy to fix. Anyway, if that's the worst thing that comes from 10,000 miles of pretty grueling driving in a car, can't exactly complain, hey? Um, especially when we're on road surfaces like this, some random ratchet straps I've just had to avoid on the road, but, uh, yeah, onwards for a couple more hours into the evening. This is kind of fun. We're alongside a freight train. The back of it's kind of there, and the freight trains here stretch so far. I mean, this must be hundreds of containers. 
hundreds and hundreds. And obviously this car came over in one of these smaller ones, the 20 foot containers. You can have a 40 foot container where you can fit two cars in it. Um, I think there are some even slightly longer ones than that. And inside the 40 foot, you can actually build platforms to get like four or maybe even five cars into one container, which is kind of crazy. But this car came over in a dedicated 20 foot, the small ones. And I just find these things fascinating because they go on and on and on and on. Roads here in New Mexico, not good. Already not good. But we're still on Route 66, chilling, cruising, on towards the sunset. Check out, as we come over the hill here, this sunset. The sky is so dark orange. Vibrant. Bit of an elephant race with the two trucks. But a moment to take in the scenery as the sun sets here in New Mexico. Morning! We decided to stop for the night. It's very fresh here. We're at pretty high altitude, just outside of Albuquerque. But this is the beauty of this car. You can get so much stuff in it. We've managed to squeeze everything, actually. I need to grab my sunglasses, which of course are my lovely limited edition yellow pair. The new yellow Schmiel 50 Future Wear sunglasses. We also have our track day sticker on there. Very proud of having that. The extra stop on the circuits that this car has achieved. We could actually fit more in here, to be honest. You could squeeze more up around the cage and things like that. But for now, it's time to get it started, get the journey continued because we've still got 10 hours to go. 10 hours from here to the Stradmans via the Four Corners monument. Let's go. Okay, the nav is set. Four hours to go to Four Corners. But this seat is so cold. You can tell the car's been outside overnight. Oh, brisk. Six degrees Celsius, it says. It's been a while since we had that, especially the last few days in Texas. Even though it was raining, it was not this chilly. Right. Oh, let's go. Let's drive. We've just had a completely impromptu stop here at Mercedes-Benz of Albuquerque. As we were driving by, we figured we would approach a problem that kind of sprang out of nowhere that I hadn't really considered before. So once you get to the west of Texas, the best pump gas you can pretty much find is 91 octane. 91 octane is approximately equivalent to 95 RON in Europe. It's a different scale. Now a car like this running over 800 horsepower basically needs 97 RON, which is 93 octane. It's been completely fine throughout the tour so far, but from here in New Mexico, we're also driving through Colorado, Arizona, uh, Utah, Nevada, California, where you can in some places find better fuel, better gas, but generally 91 is the max. Now, that's clearly going to pose a problem. So there are a few solutions. The first is that when you fill up, you could put in some octane booster, which will raise it by one or two, depending on what you're putting in afterwards. But with a direct injection engine, it's not really recommended. It's not good for it overall. The other, which the team here have very kindly been trying, is to use the Mercedes-Benz Zentry system, the computer system, where you could code the car to lower the power, lower the timings, and accept a lower octane fuel, except for some reason, it's not working. And it might be because it's a European car here in the US. It might be because of a whole host of different factors. But we've actually been on the phone to Lucas from Opus, who did all the tuning. It's not locked out, nothing like that. Can't quite get to the bottom of it at this moment in time. So we're not going to be able to go ahead with that. What it means for now, though, is that we can drive on 91. It's not going to break anything. The worst that will happen is it will have, um, it will knock and then we'll get engine warning lights and it will run uh, a lower timing and a lower power anyway. What we're going to have to do is take it super, super gently, super chilled until and try and find using different websites, we can find higher octane fuel along the way. Fingers and toes crossed on that. Anyway, I want to say thanks to the team here who have been amazing. They've been really helpful on our kind of springing this problem upon them. But for now, let's continue. This is getting really quite exciting now. We have these extraordinary views out in front of us, driving past all sorts of crazy rock formations and various different things. But the point I would like to make right now is that on the dashboard, we have 9,996 miles at the moment. We are less than four miles away from having 10,000 miles on an AMG GT Black Series. We've worked out exactly when it's gonna happen, so I'm gonna know the moment. It's about three and a half miles at the moment, 3.4 miles. But yeah, this is kind of crazy if you think about it, to have driven so far with this. We just have to take it really steadily. We just have to take it super easy. I mean, look at this, look out here, look at these land formations. We're also at 7,000 feet elevation. That's around 2,000 meters. That's like ski resort altitude, which I hadn't really considered before. But I mean, 2,000 meters is a high ski resort in Europe. Most of them are like 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 meters. So very, very high up. 
in this car, just taking it super easily because we can't put the foot down. We need to just cruise, just cruise all the way, every pull out, take it easy, take it gently. We've been looking and we think we can find some good stuff in Salt Lake City, but we are on a tank of 91 at the moment and we will have another tank of 91 that we need to change to. It's a bit of a problem. It's not the biggest problem in the world. It's just more a little bit of a frustration, a little bit of a kind of face palm. Why didn't I prepare for that and get it done in advance or something? But then we would have been down on power for Kota, swings and roundabouts, just kind of accept these little things on a road trip and make progress and keep going. Just look at this place. Just look around. So we are down now, 9998 to the last two miles. This is the final countdown. We have 0.2 of a mile until that's going to be saying 10,000. And we actually have a turning here as well. 0.1 of a mile. Is it going to be exactly as we turn? Wait for it. There we go, 10,000 miles on my AMG GT Black Series. And I've got a busy road to cross in front of a school bus. We might actually be able to stop just here and get an obligatory photo of the 10,000 miles in question. Stop, start. This feels a little bit eerie, kind of middle of nowhere with the bus going past. But hey, here we are. Can I pull over right here? This is not GT Black Series friendly terrain, but we've done it because I want to take a photo while I can. 10,000 miles. How crazy is that? Just keep it running. Look at this on this car. I, okay. 10,000 miles in a normal car I get, but I don't know of anyone else with one of these who's done that. And it's thinking what those miles mean, where we've been, the places I've driven, the things I've done with it. That's what's so cool. Another Corvette. This time we have a C7. Nice. From here, we can see very distinctly where the border to Arizona is, where the tarmac changes color immediately. So we leave New Mexico, then there's the Arizona sign, just there, welcome to Arizona, because we have this little loop in Arizona before we then come back into New Mexico for the monument, then we go to Colorado, and then we go into Utah, except by that point, we'll have walked in all of them. It's all a bit strange how this works, but it's only 10 miles to get to where we're going over there somewhere. Well, here we are then, Four Corners Monument, which means Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and standing in all four at once. Cool. Look at that car parked in the sunshine, slightly off-road, a little bit different to the day out at Circuit of the Americas, but that is the only place where you can go to four states at once. Currently in New Mexico, but if we drove round, we could literally drive to all four. Just not so sure I can get over that. So we'll give that one a miss for now. Anyway, onwards with the journey. This isn't ideal on a bit of road that's being repaved, but we make do. Welcome to colorful Colorado. I remember those signs from the last time we drove through Colorado. Funny thing about this is the tires are flicking up stones, which are now all over the bonnet. Got a whole load of stones over this side, which is quite funny. But all I can do here is take it, oh, that was a big bump. Take it slowly and carefully. This is under 20 miles per hour. Um, I'm just looking forward to that tarmac ahead of us. We emerge down a hill and there is the Utah sign. I'm actually gonna put it in here to try and get a photo somewhere. Can I pull in somewhere? I'll find a way. But that will be welcome to the beautiful state of Utah. We're here and I definitely cannot drive down there. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I'll figure something. While we make our way onwards through Utah then towards Mr. Stradman's, we are going to talk a little bit about some of the costs of this car because having driven 10,000 miles in it, I guess I've got a pretty good oversight and as you would expect being a new AMG, there haven't been too many things to have to spend money on, only consumables. There's nothing outside of consumables and obviously respraying it and doing all of the Opus upgrades that I've actually had to outlay any cash for. So we've got fuel economy, gas economy in UK gallons. And remember a UK gallon and a US gallon, are not the same. There's about 20% difference between them. This car does around 17 UK MPG, which is around 13 and a half to 14 US MPG. And that's measuring every single tank I've ever done on it, brim to brim, making sure I've got all of the exact numbers, including the five or so track days I've done. Of course, if we're driving somewhere like this, just chilling at 55 miles per hour, 
making our way through Utah, the fuel economy is much, 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 much better than if I am foot to the floor on Circuit of the Americas. So it makes for an interesting balance overall, but it's not so bad, especially when you're out here and the prices are about a third, maybe just towards a half of what they are back at home. Again, trying to calculate the different size of gallons, it's all very, very, very confusing. Outside of that, the annual service, I think that's the best part of a thousand pounds, maybe it's like 750 pounds or something like that. Tires, tires are expensive. They do run around nearly 2,000 pounds, so just over $2,000 for a full set on this car. I'm now gonna be going on to my third set when we change them at the other end of this journey. But something I've mentioned before that I am gonna be doing is not changing to another set of the Cup 2Rs. So for the GT Black Series, it has the specific Cup 2R with the GT Black Series graphic on it, but I'm gonna go down to a regular Cup 2. Now, you could go to a PS4S, which would be even more dailyable, but the Cup 2 is a tire I love. I'm a little bit anxious about the fitment, so stay tuned for the next update to see how it looks, because they are slightly more slender tires than these. 325 at the back instead of 335, 275 at the front instead of 285. That remains to be seen exactly what they'll look like. In terms of general wear or things that I will need to deal with down the line, one thing that is fairly textbook with these things, Alcantara steering wheels or Dynamica steering wheels, you can clean it up, but obviously a lot of driving in hot places, the Middle East, around Texas, a bit of sweaty hands, especially at Kota, because I don't have any gloves with me, and these are getting a little bit grimy around the hand grips, and will need to be cleaned up, maybe eventually it will need to be retrimmed. Um, we'll see about that down the line. There are also some, ooh, 10,101. I love palindromic numbers, 10101, and nearly 300 miles on this tank. Um, one very odd thing is that at the front of the car, all the leaves come in through the grill. There are some openings for the aero at the front. So when we were driving 10 at the Dragon with all of the foliage and everything falling, it filled with leaves and there's no way to get it out. You need like a, a vacuum, but you can't even stick the vacuum in. You've basically got to take the tray off on the bottom. So that's maybe a cost that's going to be slightly annoying to deal with at some point to get all of those leaves out. Or maybe I just send the leaves back home. I don't know, decision not yet made on that. But outside of those things, there's not really all that much to add. In comparison to doing the trip in the GT500, when we had just driven into Utah and were faced with very different Utah scenery to what we're looking at now on the GT500 trip, we were desperately low on fuel. Desperately low to the extent that it was not cruising at the speed limit as I am now. It was 20 miles per hour under, panicking because the next station was in like 60 miles and we only had 40 miles of range. And that was not gonna bode very well. In this, you get, I mean, this tank says we've done 294 miles and I've got 109 to empty. We could theoretically go over 400 miles on a single tank in a car that's comfy and good to cruise in, but also destroys Kota as it did. So I've beaten about the bush a lot with this, but it's a really, really good car for this kind of trip, especially the reliability side of things. And on a day like today, when we are cruising to this extent because of this 91 octane fuel problem, I mean, it's just, it's just take it easy. It's just enjoy the view, enjoy the scenery around. I mean, look at this place, look at the rocks all around this road. What a wonderful place to be driving. Just taking it all in, just a feast for the eyes to enjoy, to enjoy the drive. But we do have, goodness, five and a half hours to go. So we'll need to do a fill up of 91, cruise again. And then when we get to Salt Lake City, I'm gonna try and track down somewhere with some better fuel. That's the aim at least. Wish me luck, let's see how it goes. Views on views, as James would say, as we head through this unbelievable location. Not too long to go. Audi R8 spotted. Cool. We've just been driving through a mountain pass at minus one degree Celsius on Cup 2Rs. We've made it to the other side, and most excitingly, we've come straight thanks to a map online to a petrol station, or a gas station, which in theory has 93, 91, I think there's a 93 somewhere. It says online that there's a 93 somewhere. Haven't found it yet. Let me go back to the start and see if we can find it on the other side. Because the internet tells me there's a 93 here. I'm not giving up yet. I am not giving up, maybe it's on this side. Otherwise, this is a monumental fail. We found it, that was, a little bit of a scare, but here, not only do they have 
above 91, but they actually have both 100 and 110. 100 octane race fuel unleaded and 110 leaded off-road fuel. I think we're about to put in 100 octane even at $10 a gallon. Still cheaper than England, still cheaper than we pay at home, so I'll accept it. All right, let's do this. Well, the good news is that we now have a calculated average of something like 96 octane fuel in the tank, which is exactly what we needed. So trying to work out exactly where I am going for the last stretch of this incredibly long drive today. Actually not going to just boot it straight from the off because let the gas fuel go through a little bit, mix it up as opposed to just booting it straight away on 91 but looking forward to being able to open it up a little bit more after the very gentle drive we've had today. Well this is a little bit surreal, that is one very familiar house albeit quite dark right now. Here we are at James's dream house. I think he's here already. He's actually been out for the evening as well. Up the driveway, lots still to be done, like the landscaping and all of that out here. But this is it. We can drive through the arch. There he is. There's the man. <laughs> We've made it. We are here. He's going to the wrong side. <laughs> Saw that coming. Dude. How you doing? You made it. This is the first British registered car in my house. At this house. Shocking, I know, right? Sam, seen through uh -huh. glass, yeah. came with his car to your old place. He did, yes, you're right. So he it's did. not the first British car to ever visit you. True, but at the new house it is, so you got the first time. Have you ever driven a right-hand drive car? I have, yeah, a couple times. Oh. It's weird. That ruins the fun. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Let's come through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just loop around and pull right in. Now this is where we don't reveal too much. We've made it, the car is parked inside, and get this, we're now on a whopping grand total of 10,431 miles. Almost 5,000 more than when I collected this car here in the USA in the first videos in New York City, driving it in Manhattan. The previous time that I was there, in New York City was in fact with the Shelby GT500 ahead of Gumball and we actually met up with James with that car in the city as well that car that I'd previously seen when it was its original Pirelli look before being completely transformed repainted wide body and everything that he did with it now we're going to have a full look through here of course so stay tuned for that all coming soon but I'm not going to lie this has been a very 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 long couple of days 48 hours or so on the road in the GT Black Series. It's a brilliant car for it. It is a dream journey. And talking about dream journeys and dream cars, you could win yours with BOTB plus the Midweek Lifestyle Competition. All the information is down below. A huge thanks as always to BOTB. I've met plenty of winners along the way and it's always very fun to hear their stories and see them enjoying their cars. For now though, time to wrap it up. Go have some rest and get ready for plenty of fun in the days to come. So stay tuned for all of that. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.